All right, so we're back. We're going to finish up the nameplates in this episode. I apologize, this particular part of the build project is taking so long, but I wanted to make sure that I shared my mistakes with you. At the end of the day, that it, one of the best ways to learn about new things is to make mistakes. So I'm definitely making my share of those uh, with these nameplates. But hopefully, I'll get uh, some speaker grill cloth. I'm working on identifying and sourcing a company that has probably the closest to factory original speaker grill cloth for this build project, which I've found has been quite difficult to source. So if this works out and this ends up being factory correct grill cloth, I'm going to be super excited because this will be one of the, the only references to where to get this grill cloth that I can find. And then also, I'm still working on sourcing um, close to factory correct speaker uh, cones as well as voice coils. Um, I've got a couple of calls into a couple different vendors uh, as well as a local shop here that actually has my original speakers from Marshland uh, in his shop right now trying to source at least spec correct uh, components for those, those speaker baskets. So with that, let's go ahead and cut into a time-lapse montage of me finishing up these nameplates. Thanks for watching. All right, so we're back. It's been a couple of days. Um, been trying to figure out how I want to fix this because I made a couple of mistakes, obviously. Um, when I went to go put silver on this first uh, name badge, man, I put it on way too thick and it really didn't work. Um, that and I used, in my estimation, the wrong paint. I was using some Rust Oleum paint. Not only did it go on way too thick, but it took like three days for it just to dry off enough for me to sand it um, and sand it smooth. So I made a couple other tests while I was working on that. I tried using the silver paint pen. It didn't turn out very well either. Um, and there's a couple of nicks and scratches on this that's really kind of bugging me on both of these nameplates. So before I put the silver on, I'm going to go ahead and fix those little scratches and nicks. Uh, let me show you the still shots of that now. So what I'm going to use to fix these little scratches and nicks is going to be some Bondo. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm down to bare plastic on those spots. So I'm going to take some, uh, some 400 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to kind of rough those up so that the Bondo has a good surface to stick to. And once I get that done, then we'll mix up some Bondo, stick it on there, let it dry. It only takes about 10-15 minutes to dry and then I can sand it smooth with some 400 grit sandpaper. And then we can try uh, the new paint that I bought, which was the same brand of automotive paint um, that I did the black with that seemed to work really well. It dried quick, it dried hard, and it, it seemed to bond with the plastic most importantly. That was the, the operative factor in, in me making that decision to buy that. So let me change camera angles and you can see what I'm doing. All right, so now that we've got the nameplate sanded down and prepped and ready to go, we'll mix up the Bondo. We don't need very much at all. We'll get that done, get it in there, let it dry, and then we'll come back and sand it down. So I'm just going to use this little piece of scrap cardboard to mix it up. So we don't need much, hardly any. 
So that's probably about three times what I need. <laughs> but that's what we're going to go with. So I need to squirt a little bit of hardener in there. needs. And this has a uh, an open time of about 10 minutes, which is not very long. And you'll be able to tell when it's starting to really work because it actually gets hot. There's a little, the chemical reaction between the two epoxy components creates a little bit of an exothermic reaction. So as soon as you can kind of feel it getting a little warm, you know your time is starting to run out. means, unlike me, you better figure out what you're going to apply it with and have it ready to go. So I need to go find a popsicle stick or something. Fortunately, I think I've got some back here. Where are they? Yes. All right. My wife's little craft supply closet came to the rescue there with the little popsicle stick. So this will be perfect for applying it. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. I don't want to get much on there. That creates more work sanding it off. This is just one of those things I know that after the amount of work I've put into cutting out these letters and masking it off the way that I have, to see those little imperfections given the amount of work I've already put into it, it's just going to kind of drive me nuts. So. I figured I'd make the small investment of time to go ahead and do this. Alright, so these really weren't too bad, so we'll come back in about 10-15 minutes, we'll sand it down, and then we'll shoot some silver on it. Alright, so we're back out in the garage set of the basement. And this time we're going to be hitting it with some Dupacolor Perfect Match. This is their universal silver metallic paint, so it's got a little bit of silver fleck in it. And that's what we're going to be using this time. Hopefully that dries a little bit faster, a lot harder than that Rust-Oleum over a quicker period of time, which hopefully will allow us to get two good coats on that are nice and light, that we'll be able to peel off the plastic dip off the background, and then hopefully hit it with some clear, and this thing will be done. Alright, so here's the moment I've been waiting for to see if I've messed this up, and if so, how bad, or did it turn out just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and peel off the plastic dip off the background and see what it reveals. Now, off camera what I did is I ended up doing three coats of this paint. After the first coat, I decided to take a light pass at it with the 400 grit sandpaper just to get some of the little bubbles off. Uh, I didn't get all of the scratches and bubbles out, but it's close enough. I think uh, once I put the clear coat on it, it should fill in some of that and make it look pretty good. Alright, so I think I'm going to start with the sides. Yeah, so this is not coming off very well. All right, we're back. I've got my doggy helper over here, Ellie. You probably can't see her under the table, but here she is. But anyway, um, we've let this dry overnight, and it became significantly harder for me to peel off. When I first started uh, working on it last night, it had... Um, it was still, for whatever reason, it, the, the paint had actually softened up the plastic dip underneath it, and that made it fairly easy to peel off. I had to fashion some tools out of some popsicle sticks, which I'll show you a, a clip of now. And 
and this generally has made it really easy to, to get it off. It's still way bigger of a pain in the butt than I ever wanted it to be. Um, but <clears throat> basically what I've done now is I've tried to, now that it's gotten hard again, I've tried to steam it just to lighten it, lighten the adhesion. And it seems to work a little bit, but I got a lot of scraping to do with these little popsicle sticks. But you can tell it is kind of starting to turn out pretty okay. Um, so with that, let me go ahead and just cut to a time lapse of me scraping the heck out of these. So we can see we've got one down we still have one to go man this took a long time to get to this point but I'm kind of pleased with how it turned out so far I think it's gonna actually look really really good once I get a chance to clean it up with some soapy water and then shoot it with some clear coat hit record.